I'll be giving an update on PNG Power. It's been dominating the headlines lately. So um, just to give an update on what we're doing um, as a Papua New Guinea's power company. Um, I'll, for the purpose of the discussions, I'll just touch on a brief outline. Um, I'll be going through the overview, uh, PNG Power, what we do here in the country for those visitors coming and visiting us here. Uh, the market overview, what the electricity market looks like in PNG. Uh, what we're doing in terms of the recovery. Um, I think uh, just a couple of speakers this morning touched on uh, the issues currently faced in the energy sector in the country. But we also have very strong partners who are behind PNG Power and the government uh, to put PNG Power and our electricity on the road to recovery. So I'll be touching on that. Um, what the demand focus looks like, um, and the PPL major project that we're doing in aligning with the recovery plan. And towards the back end, I'll touch on the regulatory environment. An overview, um, PNG Power has been established since 1973. Um, it's more than 50 years in existence, previously as the Papua New Guinea Electricity Commission, or ELCOM, when um, it was uh, corporatized in 2001-2002 to the current uh, PNG Power Limited. We operate, uh, the, we've got a license to operate the generation, transmission, and distribution, as well as the uh, last mile, the retail segment uh, throughout our centers in the country. Um, PNG Power, as the utility company, um, we are at the forefront when it comes to energy. Um, we, we understand our role. Yes, we have our challenges, but our role to play in nation building, as my chairman mentioned uh, for KCH. Currently, our operations, we have 210,000 registered customers. Um, of, of that, uh, we also have 600 megawatt of installed capacity. We operate three main grids. Uh, the Port Mosby grid here in the national capital, which is our largest by in terms of the size. Then we have the Ramu grid in Lai, Medang, and the Highlands, which is our longest grid. And the Gazelle grid in the New Britain, East New Britain. Of that, we also operate 17 mini standalone grids across the country. We've got uh, 1,071 kilometers of high voltage lines and 2,589 kilometers of distribution or low voltage lines across the country of the network of centers we operate. We are also one of the largest employers in the country with 1,575 employees. Of that, 20% of that are female employees. The challenges we hope so the challenges we have, we have an aging generation and transmission infrastructure. We also, in the last couple of years, uh, the government has opened up the generation space and allowed for independent power producers to come in the generation space. And um, we've got a combination of fuel or gas as well as HFO and uh, hydro generation to support our operations. Um, one of the huge challenges that we face and is the company's ability to recover its cost. Um, the last time the tariff was changed or adjusted was in 2013. If you factor in the inflation over the last 11 years, we went through a very high period of inflation as well as the uh, high oil price, which we depend on for our diesel stations, as well as um, the gas IPPs, which uh, the prices are linked to the oil price movements. These all pass through to us, as well as the general cost of uh, goods and services across the country. So that really affected PNG Power's operations and the ability to continue to operate. Of that, on the top of that, we, we face a, a huge challenge with the law and order issues 
like any other businesses. For us, we operate, as I mentioned, um, over 3,000 uh, uh, 3, kilometers of power lines across the country. Most of these, um, now we're facing challenge with vandalism of those lines and uh, threat to our workforce as well, the security of our workforce. Just a quick market overview. I think I've covered that. Um, just to mention, uh, just in the most recent years, uh, the government has introduced an independent regulator for the energy. I'm sure you heard from uh, MD Makata this morning. We have a regulator now in place. We want to work with that independent regulator to make sure that it is strong, vibrant, operate independently, and addresses the issues that we face as a power utility company. Apart from that, the commercial environment, um, the customers, the divers, the economy is growing. Um, we need to look at how best we come up with solutions um, to address their, their needs as we go forward. Of that, it would be a remiss of me not to state the strong support from the PEP partners that they continue to invest a substantial amount of money into the network in terms of the upgrading the network and the generation assets we have, in particular the Australian government, um, the Japanese government, uh, the US government, as well as uh, New Zealand and others. So I'll also take this time to recognize the important role that uh, our multilateral partners, World Bank and Asian Development Bank, I see the country director here, they are a very critical partner. We are currently in, uh, going through a large-scale projects, and they are behind this with, together with our government. The Marape Russo government has been very supportive, and I'll be touching on some of those projects that um, the ADBs and World Banks and DFAT, they are assisting us in later on in the pr presentation. So our recovery plans, as I mentioned, we've, we, we, we've got a legacy issues in terms of our aging assets. What we, we, we're working right now is looking at stabilizing what we have. So we are prioritizing stabilizing our three main grids, starting off in Port Mosby. So with the support from the um, Marape Rosso government through our minister, Honorable William Duma, we've invested over 100 million already into the Port Mosby grid. I'll be just giving an up a quick snapshot of Potmos being on the next slide, but we're starting to see results. And then we are focusing on the recovery, how to reduce cost, reduce technical and non-technical losses, and ensure PNG Power can deliver a high quality service to its customers and contribute to revenue growth and the growth of the economy. The third uh, pillar of our recovery plan is the reform. We're looking at the fundamental restructuring of the power sector in PNG with the support of our external partners, as well as government and the regulator, regulator NEA in preparing PNG power for future open market competition in the country. And the last pillar will be the growth, always increasing our margin through ongoing process improvement initiatives and continue to grow revenue base while strengthening the capital structure. I'll just give a quick snapshot of, uh, of our half-year performance in, term, in the Port Mosby grid. Um, you'll note in the graph, you'll see the blue um, line, that's the total system outage. In the same corresponding period uh, from June January to June 2023, we had a, a total of uh, 15 outages. But for this year, we managed to bring that down to five. That's from January to June. What I mean by the total system outage in the Port Mosby grid is when you lose the entire system, the entire city, uh, the entire city goes off. So we're working as part of the uh, government's intervention. We are now investing into the, our transmission distribution assets. 
and trying to bring that system to a more robust, resilient system than, that can um, meet Port Mosby's um, current demand as well as growth into the future. We want to reduce the total outage as well. We've reduced, we managed to reduce that from eight hours, total customer outages from eight hours, that's on average, eight hours down to um, five hours. Uh, during this period, you'll see the green line. That's the energy um, consumption, uh, the low demand for the grid. The red line is not pretty good for us. You see the, high, the, re the higher the red bar, it shows that um, there's the total outages, I mean, outages for per customer. So you'll see the 14th, um, in the first quarter of this year, we lost the Konidobu substation transformer, one of our major transformers down in Konidobu. And then we, we had our customers there on that side of the city experience, experiencing heavy load shedding, which resulted in a very high red bar there. We recovered from that, and then towards uh, May, unfortunately, we had a, a major issue with one of our transformer in Waigani. Waigani substation is located at the back of the parliament towards Morata, and of that, Waigani supports most businesses in the central Waigani district as well as parts of Waigani, Geruhu, and NCC areas. As a result of that, we also have heavy load shedding. So that contributed to the high number. But then what, the, what, what does this tell us in, in terms of what we're going to do? To address these issues, um, through the support of the Marope government, we've invested in um, eight large transformers for the, new, uh, for the substations across the city so that we, build, we bring in these new transformers. They are more modern, resilient, and help us improve power supply in the city. So there, there as we speak, we've um, procured that, and that the first couple will hit our shores um, in the first quarter of next year. So we will have this installed in um, Bomana, and uh, Waigani so that we improve power reliability in that space. The demand focus that we have, we operate um, on business as usual. We, we've, annually, we focus on a 5% growth. But again, that can change when we have large industrial customers coming on board that demand to increase. That also poses a problem for us when it comes to looking at the capacity around our generation, as well as our transmission distribution to make sure we look after our customers. So we are working um, with the government to look at bringing in large-scale um, hydros. Why hydros? It's cheap, renewable, and it gives us 24-7 um, supply all year round. So um, with KCH, we are looking at Ramu 2 and other hydro potentials up in the Ramu grid, and also looking at um, Narrow Brown here in Central Province. The key initiatives that we'll be looking, we're currently working on and trying to do uh, with the support with the, of the government through uh, various multilateral partners, we are looking at upgrading the Potmospi grid um, the first one would be to look at bringing in an additional line, a 66 high voltage line from the Caution Bay, from our two uh, gas IPPs into um, Motukia and onto Kanudi. Why we're looking at that is because of the relocation of the Port Mosby port, all of a sudden the businesses are going that's towards the Northwest Corridor. They're putting up, putting up uh, large warehouses and industrial parks there. Just this week, uh, we know steamships have gone ahead with a groundbreaking ceremony of the industrial park there. So we need to build capacity to make sure that we look after our customers on that side of the city. The Motukia substation will support the new 66 kV transmission lines as well as dedicated feeder distribution feeders to our industrial customers on that side. That will happen in 2025. The construction will start. 
On the back of that, we want to extend the Port Mosby grid. Instead of being focused within the city, um, with the support of the Asian Development Bank, um, that project is currently going through tender. We are looking at constructing and extending the, our grid down to Rigo. We will be building a new substation in, um, near Quikila Station, and we will also have dedicated feeders now to support Quikila as well as the villages and construct transmission uh, distribution lines all the way into our district as well. The new Gerohu substation project, we anticipate that to, um, to start or come online in 2028. That, that, that's funded under the AIFPP, the Australian Infrastructure Program Fund. Um, we will be building that uh, new substation up in Gerohu to support our customers there, as, uh, the households there, as well as our industrial customers. The Rauna 1 and 3 rehabilitation hydro project is currently on foot. Uh, we want to have this completed. The Rauna 1 is funded again by the Asian Development Bank. Um, we are on course to have this project fully completed by the second quarter of 2025. And you'll also note um, we are also constructing, as part of the Port Mosby Grid Rehabilitation Project, funded by the ADB. We are constructing new distribution lines across our city, as well as energizing or bringing in new feeders out from the Kila Kila substation. Uh, we will have two new 11 kV distribution lines into our CBD. Um, that project will also be com uh, completed uh, towards the second quarter of 2025. Across to, across to Ramu, um, the second phase of the Mount Hagen, uh, the first phase, sorry, the first phase of the Mount Hagen to Heights project is well underway. It's all, all already completed. We are going through the testing and commissioning. That will allow us to, that's a backbone infrastructure for Ramu. It's been funded by the Chinese Action Bank. That will then roll into the second phase, which will connect Mount Hagen into um, Ramu. So with that infrastructure in place, that will now um, be the backbone infrastructure for transmission of uh, energy, whether from Ramu end into the highlands or from highlands back into Ramu and to Ley and Medain. So the second phase is on foot. Uh, we will hope to complete that by 2026. The third project, which is funded by JICA, that's the um, lay, lay to Ramu or Sing Sing Creek. We are on track with this project. We'll in by uh, end of November, we will be commissioning one segment of that line that runs between six, um, Arab Star substation, that's just north of Nadzab Airport, into uh, Sing Sing Creek on the foot of Kassam Pass. What this line gives us is a double circuit line. It's a, that does give us the, uh, the redundancy and the resilience. So it will allow us now to dispatch from Ramu with double circuit. If we lose one line, we can always switch to the other. So that's funded by JACA. We, we want to complete the second phase, um, the entire project by quarter one of next year. The Ramu One hydropower rehabilitation project is funded by the AISPP. Currently, the documents are with NEC for approval. Once we have that approval, um, it's going, uh, the investment from AISPP will allow us now to refurbish and completely overhaul our Ramu One power station, which is, which, which is in existence for almost 40 years. We will increase the capacity from the current 40 megawatts to 75 megawatts. With that increased capacity, that will allow us now to look after our customers and industrial customers in Leigh and Medain and um, the mines in Hidden Valley and possibly Wafi Golpu. We also have the Ramu 2 hydro project that's been funded. Currently, the feasibility is funded by KCH. It's, it's going through um, the tender stage. We hope to complete and have that project announced soon. This project is a game changer for PNG Power. 
we need large scale energy, especially in the size of, of Ramu to, to bring down the cost of energy in our country. So with Ramu 2 coming on, we are looking at lots of takers potentially from the mines. Um, Wafi Gopu is on mine. Uh, we have already keen interest from Kainan 2, Yandara, and of course um, the Kumbugari mine or Ramu Nicol mine. They already approached us. Well, so we're just working with KCAs to make sure uh, we have the necessary approval for the um, commercial close. Apart from that, uh, from, the, uh, from the two main grids, with the strong support from the Australian government through the EC program, we are energizing and building generation capacity for our small B and C centers. Um, in quarter two of this year, We've commissioned Aitape Solar Hybrid Program project in the Sundown Province, as well as Arawa. And we've seen fantastic results from that. Uh, we are able to reduce our fuel cost, at the same time improve our power reliability. For Aitape, I'll just give an example. Normally in a month, we consume about, uh, for Aitape, 64 drums of uh, diesel. But after the installation of the solar and bass, we've cut it down by 32 drums. So there's a 50% reduction straight away on our fuel cost. And then we also improving because of the reliability, sales has gone up as well, and customers having reliable power. The same for um, Arawa. As we speak, um, the two broad centers that will be going through the best construction um, is Kerama and Maprik. Uh, we've got land titles. Land is an issue for us. We've secured a sizable land within those two towns. So uh, the construction will start, will start shortly. On top of that, we've got a five megawatt project for Kimbe. The Australian government have, have, uh, have come on board and supported us with that. We'll be building a new five megawatt in Kapore that will support uh, Kimbe and Biala as well. So, and we are in discussions to bring in, in uh, the solar hybrid for WeWAC, Lorengao, Kaviang, and Alatau. On the retail front, we are rolling out the first phase of the um, smart meter project, the MI smart meter project for our industrial and credit customers. The procurement is underway. We, have, we want to roll that out. If all goes well and we have the meters here, we should roll that out by quarter one of next year. That will allow us to have greater visibility on the power consumption of our customers. In smart meters, it allows us to have visibility in a central data room and we can see the behavioral consumption patterns for our customers. Once, and on, the, on top of that, the phase two of that is currently through um, the loan uh, negotiations with the Australian Infrastructure Fund currently, together with Ramu One Rehabilitation, that project is pending NEC approval. On top of that, to address our biggest data in the, in the company, which is the GoPNG, uh, we've invested in um, prepaid conversion meters. So we will be rolling out the prepaid meters going forward into uh, 2025 have all the government departments um, into prepaid, so they pay for the energy before they use instead of the current postpaid arrangement, which is not working well for us. Um, the other major customer connections, we are working on that, looking at get, uh, for Port Mosby, trying to get major customers connected. Um, we, we have, we've already constructed a new dedicated uh, feeder out of our broker substation into uh, Gordon's. This feeder will be supplying SP Brewery and Coca-Cola. The moment we're doing some final touches and we'll be formally launching that to make sure we give our two large customers on that side of the city reliable power. Apart from the, that, we're looking at the meter boxing the meter boxing exercise is what we call uh, to check the customer connections to avoid 
uh, customers from uh, power, stealing power from PNG Power. So that exercise is ongoing. We've completed Port Moresby, and we'll be rolling that into Lay and uh, Groka again in the next coming weeks. Um, with the support of the US PEP, we've uh, introduced the FIDA team uh, concept. The FIDA team is for each distribution lines, the small distribution lines that comes out of the substation and supplies each suburb. We'll have a dedicated customer team that checks all the customer connections and make sure that power is supplied to them and make sure that they're correctly built and we collect the revenue as well. So we are rolling the FIDA team uh, concept in Port, Port Mosby. We will see the results and then we make adjustments and roll that out to our other centers in the country. So I'm coming towards the end of my um, presentation now. Um, the government remains keen to promote PNG as a preferred investment destination. I'm sure so the good Minister for International Trade spoke this morning already and highlighted the challenge and power is no exception, but we are working together with our stakeholders and the government to address this. We want to make sure that we provide the reliable power for not only our households, but the industrial customers and investors alike. And to do that, we need to invest in the new assets. Those in the room, those in the country, you will recall, in, there hasn't been any major investments in the generation space in terms of the hydros. The only recent one that we, the two that we have is the Erebu Hydro that, bring the, that brought 54 megawatt into the city and the, the Baimen and Bayun in Bulolo. Of that, PNG Power was operating and relying on the two generation hydro assets. That's the Rauna system here in Port Moresby and uh, the Ramu system in um, Eastern Highlands. We need as a country to invest we cannot sit down and talk, but we need to come up with a pragmatic approach to how we can get in the foreign dollar to invest here foreign, so that we bring in the cheap renewable, renewable power that allows us PNG as a destination for investors to come in and invest. I think going forward, the establishment of an operation of NEA is a very good step by the government. It gives that independence, and we want to work with NEA so that we, bring a, we build a robust energy industry in the country. The tariff regulation, PNG Power is a victim of lack of tariff adjustments for the last 11 years. We're not able to recover our cost and maintain the services. We need, again, this, an independent NEA, the regulator, that allow us to recover our cost, come up with a cost recovery mechanism that works fair on both, not only us, our IPPs as well, um, the end uses as well, so it's fair and transparent. What we have now is all the cost pass-throughs, the oil price movements, the gas price movements, it's passed through PNG Power. But PNG Power does not have, have the ability to pass that to the end user. In turn, it's affecting the operations. The company does not have the ability to look after the customers. We're operating in a utility company. It's a capital intensive um, industry. So my message to the regulator and the stakeholders, it's good to have you all in this room. We need to drive this message home, to have an independent regulator that works with the utilities so that everyone in the energy ecosystem benefits. We pay our IPPs, we look after our IPPs, they continue to operate, and we continue to operate and provide reliable power to our customers. And towards the end, we promote the widespread use of cost-effective solar energy through the formulation of regulations and standards that will allow us to operate as a country and to provide energy. Um, I've got interest from businesses across the country trying to partner PNG Power and to see if we can come up with a solar rooftop policy that works and find the right balance so that it does not disadvantage them and us as well. We find the right balance that we continue to provide power and they use us as our primary source 
and if we go off, they can always rely on us. So we're working with the stakeholders, including NEA, and develop that so that we address the energy need for our businesses in the immediate future. 